You know, the more I look, the weirder and weirder the rabbit hole gets for pit roads on iRacing, but who even cares about that crap anyways? I'm gonna go find some more pit roads. At number 11, we have Legacy Silverstone Southern. Honestly, this pit road barely squeaks into the list because of one thing. Yes, its actual pit lane is wide, straight, has a lot of room for pits, it's pretty normal, but the pit entry is the worst pit entry in the entire game. You have two options when entering the pits here. You either have to almost come to a dead stop right in the racing line and take a 90 degree turn to hit a tiny sliver of tarmac that leads to a runoff area, or you just absolutely yeet the grass right before the yellow cones. So yes, that will give you a 1x, and yes, you might spin out, but it is honestly seconds faster than using the intended route for getting onto pit road. This design just doesn't even make sense. Like, why is it so angled to the left to get to the access road? Why can't it be more gradual? So I guess if you find yourself having to make a pit stop here and you don't care about your incidents or your safety rating if this ever goes official, then you have the fast way to do it. At number 10, we have Snetterton Circuit 100. In real life, this circuit really only runs sprint races with lower power cards and go-karts, so it makes sense that there is no dedicated pit road section for this in real life. In iRacing though, of course, this needs a pit road section, so it utilizes turn 8 of the 300 circuit to start out with. Entering pit lane is really weird because it just feels like you have a huge decision to make because turning left and turning right kind of just looks the same in terms of the width. Nothing looks like a pit entrance at this point. But once you go to the right, you were greeted by one of our best friends, the over 90 degree hairpin turns into pit road. This is of course because instead of completing turn 8 and going onto the Bentley straight, we are turning all the way back around into the small pit road part. And somehow jam-packed into this little area are 21 separate pit stalls. The very first one you can barely even get into without having to back up into it because of how quick it is after the left-hander. And after you get serviced, all you gotta do is hop one final curve on another 90 plus degree left-hander back onto the track. Overall, it has that janky charm that a lot of the tracks in the previous video had where you're just pitting in the middle of a field in the middle of a racing surface for another track. But it's only going to get weirder from here because we are going to open up a whole new can of worms for the next entry. A dirt track pit road. But wait a second, dirt races don't even use pit road. The tires never get changed in the races and these races aren't long enough to where they get refueled ever. There's just no reason to even consider dirt pit roads. They're just an afterthought. I had forgotten to consider one thing though. Fast repairs in D-Class and rookie races. In this case, you might have to find yourself on pit road in a dirt race. At number 9, we have the dirt track at Charlotte. This pit road is one of the weirdest dirt pit roads that you'll see. And not because it goes anywhere weird, but because you have to take a massive detour just to get from one side to the other. Looking at the track map, you can see that you go all the way from the back stretch to the front stretch just through pit road, but it's not a straight line like you would see at some places. We take a massive detour around a huge bend in the middle of the track. Now, if you look at it just from the map's perspective, you may think, oh, there must be some sort of building that you're driving around, but no. In fact, there is a lane that cuts right through the middle of pit road, but apparently that's not good enough for dirt pit road. And in order to get enough space for pit stalls, I guess we're going around the long way. But guess what? There are only five pit stalls at the dirt track at Charlotte. So what are we even fitting these pit stalls into if we have to go the long way around? We might as well go straight down the middle and have five pit stalls. Overall, you won't have to deal with this pit road too much except for during practice sessions coming off of pit road, but if you're in a dirt series with a fast repair or a league like that, you will have to deal with this pit road if you get damage and you need to get a fast repair. So peeling off in the middle of the backstretch and then taking a detour with a bunch of trails in front of you, that seems like a really weird experience to have for the first time. At number 8, we have the Las Vegas Motor Speedway Road Course Combined or the short course as well, they share the same pit road. This pit road has a lot of small things adding up to make it just a really weird disjointed experience when pitting the car. First, why are we not using the oval pit lane for the combined road course? We're literally using the entire front stretch, why can't we just enter pit road that way? Instead, we're stuck with pitting on essentially what I think is the trailer hauler paddock part of the infield. 
I don't know, I guess at least I can get out of my car and buy some garage passes if I need to. But backing up a bit, it all starts from the entry, which is almost a 90 degree right hand turn coming off the last corner before the straight into a very narrow entry where there's only about room for a width and a half of the car. And there's tire barriers and concrete barriers on either side. Not the most comfortable entrance ever. And what we end up on is this oddly wide pit road with like three different levels of surfaces that you have to navigate and the pits themselves are just in this nondescript stretch of asphalt. Or maybe it's concrete, I don't know. Go, go, go. But then arguably the weirdest part is the exit of pit road because there are multiple ways to exit this pit road in theory. So they laid out cones for you. But the problem is these cones are laid out in the most confusing manner as you're approaching them. It just looks like a blob of cones and, and it forces you to navigate really slowly in between all these cones that suddenly, yep, you're back on the track. It seems like you're back on the track as quickly as you're off the track. It doesn't really feel like it, but apparently I drove about a quarter of the Legends Oval in that time. You know, maybe the track designers just wanted us to have an adventure on pit road and not have to deal with a boring, uniform, ordinary pit road. And you know what? For the purposes of this video, I thank them. Yeah, all these infield road courses are just starting to remind me of go-kart tracks. And you know what else reminds me of go-kart tracks? Well, it's my first place go-kart trophy, which I got from an incredible drive I had back in 2019 at my cousin's birthday party. And since then, I just know I have what it takes to make it in the big time. And what does all this have to do with pit roads? At number seven, we have, uh, give me a sec here. Zandvoort Oosterlijk. This pit road checks all of the boxes. Does this pit road belong to a go-kart configuration where you have to make a makeshift pit road? Check. Is the pit surface itself on the main straightaway of a Grand Prix circuit? Check. Is there multiple ways to get to this pit entrance turning every which way between multiple configurations? Check. Do you have to turn sharp right hand to get into your pit box and probably overshoot it? Check. And do you merge on pit exit right back into the surface with everybody driving in the racing line in the same place? Check. I mean, I guess this is the only place they could have possibly put a pit road for this configuration, but it's just janky as all hell. The pit entrance itself utilizes a cross between a weird access road, the hairpin from the national circuit, and the chicane from the Grand Prix circuit, all to just basically lend asphalt so that you can get your way onto this stretch of the straight for pit road. What you're met with is just your flag ban and the guardrail, and I guess that's all you need. But other than that, for what it is, it's a completely serviceable pit road, which is not quite what could be said about some of the entries lower on this list. And at number six, we have... Oh, okay, I, I, I gotta use it again. Your free trial for German text oh, come to speech on. has... The Porsche Experience Center is not meant to host races. It's meant to be a training center, and that is reflected by the pit roads because for all configurations in iRacing, they need pit roads, and this training track is no exception. This pit road is like a kindred spear with Zandvoort because it is like the exact same thing except turning to the left instead of turning to the right. But a couple more small things is that the pit road itself is extremely narrow because this stretch of road was not meant for side-by-side -side racing, so you could barely fit two cars side-by-side -side throughout this entire pit road, which would be fine, except the pit stalls are right in the middle of the surface as well. So it's very obvious that you can't really have competitive pit stops on here. If you have one of the first pit stalls though, you can get out of the way of the other cars thankfully, but at the expense of your own crew, because for some reason on this configuration, your pit stall also lines up with your garage or your stall setup. So you can literally pit inside of your crew members and still have it serviced. A worthy sacrifice to make sure all of the cars stay safe out there. At number five, we have Legacy Pocono North. Now, you've probably heard me talk about Legacy Pocono Road courses before, but I was talking about the Southern course then. And you might think, wait, isn't that a really weird pit road too? Yes, it is, but hear me out. The North course has an even weirder pit road. The North course uses the Turn 3 access road to the Oval Pit Road, which sounds innocent enough, like it's kind of weird that it just lines up with the Oval Corner. But then you think about it. This access road is exactly one lane wide. You cannot fit more than one car at a time on this road. 
and there are 60 pit stalls on this stretch of pit road. 60. And yet there is only room for one car width at a time. Yes, I know that in iRacing you can drive through cars that are pitting like they're ghost cars, but it could still lead to some weird collisions, and how would this even work in real life? I got it! So overall, in theory, while this does work, in practice, there has got to be a better option than this with all of the random access road legacy Pocono infield has. And at number four, we have our second dirt entry, Weed Sport. Now, Weed Sport takes a different page out of the book for dirt track pit roads that the dirt track at Charlotte did, and we are just going into a parking lot. Screw it, who needs pit stalls inside of the oval? If you need to get your car service, go to where everyone else goes, the parking lot. Pit exit and pit entry are in the exact same place going into turn three at Weed Sport and only separated by a weird shape of guardrail that you would not want to hit at speed. And then as you go up and down pit road, you are separated by some cones. From there you go past a building that looks like where tech inspection happens. I wonder if you can get inspected there during the race. And then you come all the way around into this weird hairpin and that's where the pit stalls are. Now this is this pit or the garage or the service area for the real life Wii Sport track, so it's very funny to see how that applies with a situation in iRacing where you might have to go there live during a race to get a faster pair or any other reasons for damage during a sim race. Having cars merge from the right side or the outside during a green flag run doesn't seem too safe, but I'm sure that people can make it work since they're going into the cushion over anything. But overall, this pit area just seems like something that iRace and scanned while they were out there and said, eh, might as well use it instead of cutting up the infield and doing something down there. At number three was a track that I overlooked in my first video, and boy did I hear from you guys about it, and that of course would be Oxford Plains. Alright, so let's take a quick look at Oxford Plains. So, we enter the pit road off of turn four, it seems like pretty normal, we just kind of go to the end of pit road, it seems like a pretty normal shape. Uh, none of the pit stalls are super Two, weird. I think this one. is a pretty good pit road. Right but, uh, wait, what's that on our left? That's right, it is Oxford Plains' second live pit road. You can choose to go on this pit road by going even farther left after peeling off of turn four, and what you are greeted with is a squiggle line pit road, really the dumb younger brother of the first pit road, with the purpose of adding more pit stalls. And adding together both of these pit rows, there are 35 stalls on Oxford, which is enough to host a very large event. But wait, there are some stalls that iRacing doesn't even cover, and these are the ones on the right side of the squiggly pit road. While they are numbered on the surface, they aren't actually usable in iRacing, and only the ones on the left side are, which is good because the only thing more confusing than having to choose between two pit rows at the same time is then having one of them have cars pitting from both sides of the track, especially if it's a squiggly back and forth line. Somebody needs to enlighten me why this secondary pit road has the shape that it is. I don't think there's some sort of infield road course that this part would be used for, so why don't they just make it straight and have everybody's lives be easier going down this pit road? So while the rest of the pit road might be considered a traditional oval pit road, nothing crazy to write home about, this secondary pit road on its own has just confounded me enough to where I have to put it up this high on the list. And at number two, we have Wild West Motorsports Park. Now, this entry on the list might have the least amount of use cases as any other pit road on this list because there aren't any fast repairs in any off-road truck series. Even if on the Pro 2 lights it says that you have a fast repair, in reality you can never use it. But that being oh, yeah. said, Wild West Motorsports Park pit road is just a roller coaster on its own, literally, so I have to include it. First off, the entrance of pit road is right after a jump, so if you want to get up to pit road with a good speed and on time and all of that and be competitive, you have to fly over the jump and then immediately hook a right off of the surface. Now obviously that's not what normal people would do, but for us degenerate sim racers, we're squeezing every tenth we can out of it. So imagine just seeing cars fly onto pit road like that. And then after you enter pit road, you come around the back of the wall of the first turn, and this is just the most out of bounds that any sort of official surface on iRacing feels, because you're just looking off into the distance of some high quality texture, some low quality, and you're just on the edge of this cliff overlooking it, and it's just a very weird experience for iRacing. 
After coming around this uphill bend, you are greeted with nine pit stalls of just the side of the dirt where they extend the dirt a little bit, and you can get service there. And then when you're done, the exit might even be the weirdest part, because you are going downhill steep off of this pit road to the point where you kind of have to brake to not speed on pit road, which is a very weird occurrence. And then finally, when you pass the cones to where you don't have to go pit road speed anymore, you have to take the sharp right hander that's still part of pit exit, but you can take it at speed, which means you can push it as hard as you want, which leads to some very funny results, especially in practices. And then finally, one last left hander bend and you're back onto the course. But this overall is one of the weirdest experiences for pit road. It just feels like a whole different track where you have to drive a speed limit at some points. And at number one for the weirdest pit road round two in iRacing, it is Lernerville. Lernerville is already known for being kind of a weird track in iRacing already because of its lack of walls. But what if I told you its lack of walls makes for an even weirder pit road situation. First off, to enter pit road, you have to jump the track like you just screwed up and you're about to die. But it's very funny because it is completely blind. They give you one visual marker of like a green banner in the distance that you can more or less aim at and just yeet it over the banking and then you're on pit road more or less. Can you imagine anybody making this pit road entry on speed during a race where they had to pit for whatever reason? It's just comical. Now, obviously I know that this isn't the case in real life, but then just putting this into a sim racing perspective is just hilarious to me. After you wrangle your way onto pit road, you have to drive quite a long ways with pretty much nothing besides cones leading the way until you make one bend and then your pit stall's not even facing the right direction. That's right, you have to make like a complete 180 turn to fit into your stall like it was actually your garage stall and not a live pit stall. And after that, you just drive by some more cones, some more orange tape, some gas tanks, and it leads you eventually back onto the track where the pit road exit is just as weird as the entry because we have to jump the cushion to get back on track. And it really does feel like you're dropping into a skate park. Well, what do I know? I don't skate, but I, have, I assume that's what it feels like. There's a lot of blind faith that goes with this pit road, both on entry and on exit, which makes me think in a live setting on iRacing, it would just always end up disastrous. All in all, just like the last batch of pit rows, none of these will ever really come into play during official races in a way that it becomes distracting to the racing, but it becomes a fun and novel way to have pit roads available just in case you need them for hosted sessions or maybe dirt races with fast repairs. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is defending my go-kart title. So if any of you are having a birthday party in the next year, please invite me so I can defend my perfect title record.